as you can see, I got into the workshop nice and early, and I started handstanding, and indeed, uh, from 7 to now, 11.30 in the morning, it was handstanding time from 240 grit all the way up to 600 grit on the blade, which I am very pleased with. And now it is time for us to work on the copper piece that goes between the guard and the blade, and I believe that that is called a habaki, and so we've got to work out how we're going to make it. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoy. Now, I was rather tempted to make my habaki out of silver, but I decided I didn't want to take apart my nice hand forward solid silver YouTube play button. And so what is a habaki? Well, it is a collared piece of softer metal, so silver or copper or something like that, and it goes right up next to the blade edge. And it looks like there often seems to be a little bit of a lobe here on that front edge. And then right here on the back edge as it comes into the spine of the blade, there often also appears to be a little bit of a cutout as it transitions between the tang and the blade. To give credit where credit is due, Walter Sorrells has a fantastic video, which I'm very pleased that I watched. Thank you guys for recommending that I watch it. And I watched the video where he kind of ran through the disassembly and the parts of a katana. I'll actually drop a link in the description below. I found incredibly informative in trying to think about and, and, and guess and okay, I still have no idea what I'm doing. But think about and guess about how it is that the habaki needs to look and how it is that I might be able to make it. So first things first, I need to clean up the mess that I've made from hand sanding and then we're gonna put a piece of copper 16 millimeter bar in the forge. <laughs> So this is where we are with Habaki, and it's looking pretty cool. I'm uh, rather pleased with how this came out. I forged it from a piece of 16 millimeter round, solid copper bar. You can see we've got some little lobes coming off there. We've got that nice little transition. It's looking rather neat. And as ever, I have no idea what the next step is, what the next step could be, what the next step should be. I have no idea what it is that I'm doing, but I think out of all the options available to me, the best that I could do right now would be to get this closed up back there and to solder it. Here's an interesting thing to note though, of course, is I'm gonna need a very slim copper spacer in there that goes about three quarters of the way across the hakabi, habaki, the copper thing. Yep, that's right, the copper thing. Or actually, no, it can go about the whole way across. I was wrong. And so I'll anneal this piece and I'm gonna chisel it, thin it down a little bit, check it for thickness, break it off. We'll see if it fits. And I can see it needs to come down a smidge even. 
Okay, that's about where I need it. Just give that a little scribe line so I know where it's got to be. So I want to try something different though. So before I attempt to attach that together, the spacer and attach the things together, I'm just going to try and take these two pieces. I'm going to see if it's possible to just sweat them together in the forge. So we're going to give that a go because the worry that I have is as soon as I silver solder this, solder, solder, silver solder, this is the United Kingdom. As soon as I silver solder this, I'm not going to be able to anneal it and I'm going to be, uh, it's going to be a little, little fragile to work with. So I'm going to try sweating these together. I have no clue if this is work. I, I, I think it must. I think sweating copper together is a thing. We've got some flux there. Into the forge we go. Let's give it a go. So that it's orange right now. So that's going to soon be the melting temperature of copper. Let's pull it out. Ah, and it fell off. It didn't work. Nope, didn't work. Ah, I think it might be possible. I'm gonna try with a torch, see if, I don't know. We're gonna see, we're gonna see. We're gonna give it a go with a torch. I think I just did it. Ooh, hello. Oh, it's definitely attached, but it's all a little ugly in there. Hey, what's the worst that happens? We give this a go and I waste four hours work. What do you think, Jamie? Good odds. That good odds, right? Better than most of the odds. Is flux water soluble? I don't know. Will I find out? Yes, I will. How smart is it for me to treat something that I've spent four hours working on like this? Probably not very. What am I about to do? Probably something that's very, very silly. Look inside. <laughs> That's my spacer. Yep, that's the spacer that I ever so carefully positioned in there. I don't think it fused at all. So, uh, is that a case of, yeah, no, definitely. De definitely nothing successful happened there. But we will uh, we'll have a look, we'll kneel it, we'll inspect it, we'll have a look, we'll see what the issue is, and uh, we'll work out how to fix it. Oh, hang on. Well, it feels like something happened because not coming apart. It's just that I don't have a spacer in there. I do have a spacer fused in there. It's just fused in the wrong direction, 90 degrees to where it should be fused. There's the wedge. You don't even know what you've done this worked out, hasn't it? Yeah, I know. I have no clue what's happened. I sweated together some of the copper. It's just without the spacer in it. And I don't know how much of the copper is sweated together. So I don't know how strong it is and whether I can rely on it. I'm going to try and lightly file down here and see how much of this is, uh, is joined together. I mean, it's going to need to be filed down anyway. And I can see right here, it doesn't look like it's attached in the middle. However, at either end, it does still look pretty solid. I definitely don't think I can rely on this for the final bond, but I do need to open it up. And so either which way, filing is going to let me know whether, actually, no, you can use it as the final bond or um, it's just going to allow me to take it apart. So while I was trying to chisel that open, I just lost concentration and I didn't realize that the chisel actually chiseled down into the material, not either side. This, surprisingly, is an extremely strong bond. Um, I couldn't chisel it apart, so I'm very nervous as to what it is to do. I have no idea what the best solution is. What we're now going to do is we're going to try silver solder again, even though I didn't want to try it at first. So this, I believe, is silver solder. And this here is flux. I think maybe one time I've silver soldered, but I still have no clue how to do it. This is what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to get some flux in there. I'm going to cut a piece of silver solder, and we're going to heat it up until that flows down into the joint. And this might go terribly again, but we might learn how to silver solder, in which case there's another thing we've learned. I'm terrified, Jamie. Like, I, this, is, this is so difficult. I've spent so many hours on this. Oh my goodness, guys, guys. Making stuff is difficult. I mean, it's fun, but it's, ah! I don't want to break this. I've spent so much time making it. All right, so I need to get some flux in there. There we go, flux inside. Okay, let's measure this. Here's the silver solder. And I'll drop that inside of it. I'm gonna warm up the tongs that are holding it ever so slightly so they're not too much of a heat sink. And I don't know how successful that is. We'll, uh, we'll come back for take two. Come on now, come on now. Get on with your damn self. Let's go, let's go, melt. I'm sure if I knew what I was doing, I would know if this was working or not. I'm gonna flip it over and try and flow some solder in from the underside. <laughs> that did not work. How well is this working? Not well at all. This is absolutely and unequivocally going to fail. Take 10 trillion. Come 
Considering I'm a YouTuber and I'm pretty familiar with the platform, I should probably try and look up a YouTube tutorial. <laughs> Let's go learn how to solder, kids. <laughs> This is not my proudest moment. <clears throat> Jamie, Jamie, oh, why is we are struggling? You don't even know. You don't even know how much I'm struggling. In case you're wondering what it is that I learned from my YouTubing session, uh, not a whole lot apart from maybe have the pieces a little closer together. So I hammered it a little closer, fluxed it again. I'm gonna wait till it's up to temperature before I touch it with the, uh, with the solder. And what is up to temperature? Still not sure. Oh yes! Yes! We're doing it! We are silver soldering! Yeah, baby! Woohoo! Woo -hoo! Oh! It's ugly. I don't know if it has worked, but it might have. So we'll try and pull out our, oh no. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> that is so in line with how things should, sh uh, how things are going. Oh no, we've got it for you. Oh. Right, so we have silver solder dribbled all over it, about three sticks worth, which is probably overkill, and hopefully it's attached together. It's probably not, but uh, it's time to start filing. I'm going to give it the last anneal of the day in the water. I'll drop it in my pickle. I'm going to call it there for today. Today has been a day of lots of failure, but it has been very enjoyable. It's, it's very enjoyable working away, trying these new processes. I'm sure lots of you guys have loads of tips, which I always really appreciate reading in the comments below. Sadly, I'm going to be done with this thing by the time I read them, uh, which is a problem because that's going to be tomorrow, which is yesterday. You know, it's, it's, it's a complicated thing, this, this whole time thing. But I will see you tomorrow for you on the next episode as we continue on with the project, as I continue on taking on challenges that I have no idea how to do and start working my way through them. So make sure you hit subscribe and I will see you then.